influence that your circles have on you is inevitable and not easily detectable. Every single person that you spend an extended amount of time with influences you, whether you like it or not, whether you deny it or not, and in ways that you can't even connect or detect, right? You start talking the same way sometimes. You start, you know, making the same jokes. You start uh, being able to predict what that person's going to say and what a person can predict what you're going to say to an extent, there is an influence. Your character starts to change, your standards start to change, the things that you see as objectionable or not objectionable, praiseworthy or not praiseworthy, that all is going to impact you whether you like it or not, whether you're 17 years old or whether you are 7 years old. Your group will rub off on you and it's not about whether or not it will rub off on you, it's about the extent to which you let that rub off on you. Okay? And that's why there's a saying, a sahibu sahib. A sahib, a companion, is a sahib, someone who drags you. Imma ila al-jannah wa imma ila nar Either drags you to paradise or drags you to hellfire. Literally, the Prophet ﷺ said, you will be resurrected with the people that you love. The people you hang out with, are those, are those the people you hope to be around on Yom Al-Qiyamah? Are those the people you hope to show up on the Day of Judgment standing with you that you think will have the best chance of making an argument for you? Or are you going to say, oh God, I hope, I'm going to pretend I don't know this person. Who do you want around you on the Day of Judgment? That's who you should be around in this dunya. Who do you want around you on the Day of Judgment? Now the influence is subtle. And the Prophet ﷺ talks about these subtleties, right? Where the famous example of a person who sells musk and if you don't purchase, a good friend is like a person who sells musk, even if you don't purchase their product, their inventory, they're going to rub off on you. And you're going to smell good. Likewise, you have the opposite of that, an evil friend, a blacksmith, right? Just think about a smoker, right? No offense to the smokers here, but smoking is haram. All right, someone smokes cigarettes and you're around smoking. Secondhand smokers, the, the smoke gets on you, you start to smell nasty, right? Even if you did not smoke the cigarettes yourself, right? There's something that happens to you in the process of all of this, right? So here's what the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to make all of all of that. And here's where we come to our ulama of how to make things of that. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Uhibbu salihina walastu minhum. I love the righteous, even though I don't really consider myself to be amongst them. Meaning, you know what? When I hang out with the ulama and I hang out with righteous people, I don't feel like I'm at their level. I feel like they're better than me. Not only will I hope that their character will rub off on me, but I hope on the Day of Judgment, I would have their intercession. And I hate the one who trades in evil. Even if I feel like we have the same inventory. I don't like people that trade in evil even if I feel like we trade in the same inventory. So I love those who trade in good inventory, hoping that they'll rub off on me and they'll remember me on the Day of Judgment and testify for me. And I don't like those who trade in evil because I'm afraid that, you know, even though we might have the same inventory, those are not the people that I want to be around on the Day of Judgment. Hence, Imam bin Ata'illah rahimahullah ta'ala talks about this powerful way of approaching friendship. Do you want a friendship that's just halal? people around you that simply don't make you do haram. Alhamdulillah, the best, types of, you know, the best types of journeys and people that you can be around, people that won't make you sin. You can enjoy what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to enjoy and you're not going to sin. That's a good step. But to befriend people who actually inspire you with their very being. They inspire you with their hal. He said, rahimahullah ta'ala in his hikam, in his wisdoms, لا تصحب don't hang out with people whose hal, whose state does not inspire you. The state should be an inspiring state. There should be something about their character that you can identify, something about their state that you want to rub off on you. If you can't identify it, then it's probably not the great, great, greatest friendship. Especially if you can identify a bad trait, that maybe I backbite more. Maybe I gossip more when I'm around this person. I just, things flow easier. No, someone whose state inspires you. And someone whose words direct you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Either they remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by rem remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala themselves and injecting the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your gatherings, or they are not afraid to remind you of Allah when they see you distancing yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 